Good morning. So, because my last A Day in the Life of an Insurance Agent was more of <clears throat> a get ready with an insurance agent, I'm refilming for you guys and keeping it strictly insurance and showing you everything. What time is it right now? It's eight o'clock. So I have a half hour before my work day starts and can't wait to spend it with you guys. So what I do every morning is open up my email, uh, try and catch up on what has happened overnight, what's come in overnight. Damn, <laughs> I have a lot. So the first thing I do is open up Epic. That is the database that we use to track all of our activity. I also track all of my sales in Epic. As I go throughout the day, I'm adding new opportunities. I'm closing them, whether I lost or sold the business. And then my pipeline changes for closed business. But I have $73,500 in premium in my opportunities right now just for January, which is incredible. Compared to last year, I had 12,000. <laughs> I wrote 12,000 my first month at my agency last year, and now I have 74,000 in my pipeline just for this month. Wild. So I will go through certain scenarios with you because every single client is different. I do write business in the New England states. So we have 16 offices through Mass and Connecticut. I am personally licensed in Mass, Rhode Island and Connecticut. Uh, we write in New Hampshire. We don't write in Florida. That was one of the questions I got from you guys on my Instagram. So mainly New England states. So let's tackle some emails and see what's interesting. I had a client complete a condo application. So they own a condo in Boston and they haven't had insurance on it because the mortgage is paid off. So when you have a mortgage on your home, whether that be investment property, a condo, a single family, you need insurance. Insurance protects the mortgage pretty much. And when you don't have a mortgage, you do not need insurance. I would literally never recommend that. If something were to happen to your home, you need to pay all of that out of pocket and that can really, really suck. So I'm going to forward this application to my processor. So I would not be as successful as I am at my job without the workflow structure that is in place. So my team is me and another woman and she does all of my quoting for me. She is a godsend. Anytime I have a question, she answers it in five seconds. I swear she knows absolutely everything about insurance. I don't know what I would do without her, but she also processes all of my policies. So my job as an insurance consultant is to bring in the business. So farm in the business from outside sources, whether that be real estate attorneys, loan officers, realtors, or my natural network. And I gather all of that information submit it to her, she processes it, gives me quotes back, and then I submit the quotes to my referrals or my clients. And then it's my job to sell it. Once I sell it, I have to complete the paperwork, send it to the client, and once the paperwork is signed, I send it back to my process, I guess my processor, and she issues everything for me. So we have an insanely great workflow. We get so much done. Like I just can't, if I didn't have her, I literally do not know what I would do. So yesterday I created a Facebook post. I'll insert it here for you guys. This is a great idea. If you want to start getting referrals from your natural network, I save people thousands of dollars on their insurance. And I think when people see my posts, they think it's like some kind of gimmick or it's too good to be true. It's not, it's so easy to figure out if you're, if you're overpaying for insurance. If you are not local to Mass, Rhode Island, Connecticut, if you're not in the New England states and I can't help you, I would recommend Googling insurance agencies near me. Do not click on like the first three or four. They'll say add next to them. That's usually gonna be like a Geico or a Liberty Mutual or a State Farm that's paying for that ad space. Scroll down a little bit and find a local agency near you. Most of the time you can fill out information on their website and then they'll contact you to get a little bit more to give you an accurate quote. Um, that's definitely the best way to go about getting an insurance quote is through a local agency. 
So the difference between a direct writer like Allstate, Liberty Mutual, Geico, and an agency like mine is that I have access to dozens of carriers, like well over 24 carriers, where if you go to Geico, Allstate, Liberty Mutual, State Farm, they can only give you a quote from them. There is so much that factors into insurance quotes, which is why I recommend going to not one local agency, but a couple to get quotes. Normally, the smaller the agency, the less carriers they write with, so they're not that competitive which is another reason why I am able to save so many people so much money. A lot of the other agencies in my area are smaller and they might only write with like three or four carriers where my agency is larger but still local and I write with over 20 carriers. Hello. So I am about to submit a fact find, which is where I take all the information I gathered on drivers, the homeowners, if they have pools, dogs, all of that information, throw it in this fact find and I'm gonna send it out to my girl. So I had someone reach out to me, they're purchasing a new home and they are recent newlyweds. So I'm trying to bundle their home and auto together to get them a discount. It makes the most sense to have your home and auto at the same agency, that way you get a discount. Even if your home is with a different carrier than your auto, most of the time you can still qualify for a discount if, as long as you're with the same agency. So I'm trying to do that. I'm also trying to put them both under the same auto. So in Massachusetts, you need to be married in order to be on the same auto policy. There's a couple loopholes, I'm not gonna tell you them, but right now they are on separate policies. So 90% of the time, if you have multiple drivers, multiple vehicles and good driving records on the same auto policy, your premium is going to shrink substantially. So as I was going through, I found out that this client that this referral that reached out to me hasn't had insurance since summer and she had no idea. So because she has not had insurance since the summer, her registration has been revoked. She's had absolutely no clue about any of this. So that's just a snippet of the information I can find out for you while going through and reviewing your policies for you and trying to get you the best premium. Even though she's had a serious lapse in coverage, I will be able to, oh my So I just got like a terrible email. I have a meeting at 12 o'clock in Westport. So I'm gonna have to finish up what I'm doing and then start getting ready. This is the meeting that you're going to be meeting a broker owner uh, from Milestone Real Estate, Milestone Realty, I'll have to check. It's Milestone Realty. So I figured I would answer a couple questions as I'm on my way to this meeting. Another question was, who or what is the best insurance carrier for auto insurance? I don't think they specifically said a state. Um, I'm gonna go based on Massachusetts. That is so hard to say. So insurance carriers go based off of a rating, um, AM best rating, A plus rating. So you can Google them to figure out what carrier your rating is. And basically it comes back to customer service, claims there's so much that goes into that rating so our bella is really good they were excellent when my husband got into an accident in my jeep my claim was worked on immediately i got money back immediately um everything was just incredible so claim experience is really good okay i need my gps on now so we'll pick this up after It is 344. I left the house like 1145. So that was a really long meeting. Um, I tried my best to show you some of it. Obviously I wasn't gonna be putting in audio. <laughs> you weren't listening to our meeting. Um, but yeah, so now I have to catch up on <laughs> catch up on emails. So I had a couple more quotes come in and I still have a couple that I need to catch up on from this morning. So I'm probably gonna be where, hey Kel, you wanna come say hi? This is the insurance pup. Come on, baby. Come on. This is the insurance pup. 
This is my Callie. Oh, this is something we can talk about, Callie. Pit bulls or bad dogs in a household. So obviously I have Callie, my big snuggle monster, who is considered a, a bad dog. Hi. I love you. Um, so unfortunately, I think I mentioned this in, earlier in the video, but bad dogs really, bad dogs, she's not a bad dog, really limit, I know you heard the word bad. You're like, what the heck, mommy? So having a pit bull, a husky, there's a lot of dogs that can really hinder who you can, no, no more. I know my makeup tastes good. Who can really hinder where your insurance is placed. So with Callie, we really only had two options. So unfortunately, even though she has no bite history, has no signs of aggression ever, you are limited to who you can go with carriers. So do take that into consideration, but also make sure you tell your insurance carrier if you have a pit bull, because if they come to inspect and see that dog in your window barking at them or in your backyard, you will get canceled and no one wants that. Then no other carrier is going to want you. It's going to be even harder to place your homeowner's insurance, which is really unfortunate. So my office closes at 4.30, so I'm gonna try and catch up on as many fact finds as humanly possible in the next 45 minutes to get quotes in, and I'll catch back up with you guys once I have those in, so I can- Like, can you tell I've been working all day? <laughs> I can't. I hope this was more informative for you guys to see like what I do a day in my life as an insurance agent. That was my day. Thank you for hanging out with me. Now it's time to go to bed. <laughs>